Hi folks, welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is kind of twofold. Um, the first purpose here is just go through an example of how to calculate a centroid. And then the second part of the video here is how to use Excel to integrate numerically. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the function y equals sine x. We're going to look in the region from 0 to pi. I've already drawn just a real quick sketch. And we're going to look for y bar, the y coordinate of the centroid of this region uh, right in here. So that's, you know, some coordinate about like this. And again, we're focusing on y bar because uh, x bar can be found uh, very easily. In fact, this is problem symmetrical. So 0, this is pi x bar is at pi over 2. Now, all of these problems end up um, typically starting by you have to draw a certain element. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find kind of an average y coordinate weighted by area. So I'm going to draw a differential element. It can be anywhere in this region. doesn't matter. You just pick kind of a generic spot there. The width here, I'm going to call that dx. The length of that rectangle, that would be that distance, is equal to the function value, sine x, and this will vary depending on the example you're looking at. The coordinates of the centroid of the rectangle are the points x and y over 2. Right, x because right, that distance to the center of the rectangle is x, that distance to the center of the rectangle is half the function value. And again, that will vary with example. All right, so now when we find the centroid, what we're going to do is um, we need to take the centroid for the rectangle, which is y over 2. We need to now give it a weight, so we're going to multiply that by the area of the rectangle, which is equal to sine x times dx, and again, this that tarp part will vary by example. Sine x is the length of the rectangle, dx is the width. We need to then add these all up, <coughs> running x from 0 to pi. Then, um, what this is going to give us here, this is actually called the first uh, moment of area. We need to divide out the total area, so we're going to divide that by integral sine x dx, and again, 0 to pi, and that will give us y bar, the coordinates for the centroid of the rectangle. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually do this numerically in Excel. Now, when I do numerical calculations, I usually use what's called the midpoint rule. So my rectangles, I'm going to go back and draw a few more. There's going to be like my first one, my second one, and so forth. How these rectangles hit the curve, um, sometimes you have to pay attention to that, sometimes not. When you're going to use integrals like this, uh, typically you can ignore that because an upper bound estimate, a lower bound estimate, the midpoint, the trapezoid, they should all converge to the same value for an infinite number of rectangles. However, what I'm going to do is set this up in Excel using 10 rectangles. When we use 10 rectangles, uh, we're going to need to be mindful of how these things interact with this curve. I like to use the midpoint rule. Now, You'll notice here, you know, we're going to be computing a sine x here, and actually this is going to be another sine x. We're going to do that at very specific x locations. The first location we're going to need is right at the center of that rectangle. That's half of a delta x. So I usually kind of pattern this out here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a little column here. I, oops, actually, to tell you the truth, I'm going to back up, and I'm going to make myself some more room. Take this, shrink it down a little. Whoops. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make myself a little column. The I is just a counting number. So, for example, this is my first rectangle, then my second, third, fourth, fifth, and, and so forth. That's what this is representing. So, this, these are going to take on values like 1, 2, all the way down to n, some number that I choose. I'm going to go ahead and choose n equals 10 here, but I'm going to just leave this kind of generic. The second thing I'm going to need to calculate in Excel is I'm going to need x values at the ith for the ith rectangle. Now you'll notice that the first x value I need is right at the center. It's right there. That's half a delta x or 0.5 delta x. Second one I need is 1.5 delta x. It's right there. Third one's going to be 2.5 delta x and so forth. Now notice here if I take i times delta x, this product will put me at the right-hand side 
of any rectangle I choose. So for example, if i equals 1, 1 times delta x would put me right there, right-hand side of the first rectangle. 2 delta x would put me right there, right-hand side of the second rectangle. 3 delta x would give me right-hand side of the third rectangle, and so forth. So that, in general, i times delta x puts me at the right-hand side of the i-th rectangle, any rectangle I choose. I want to be centered, so what I'm going to do is come back, minus 0.5 times delta x, that will center the rectangle for all of them. I'm also going to need function values, so I'm just going to make another column here like f of x. Right? Then I'm going to need uh, these products here, and what I'll do is I'm going to do this all in Excel here uh, in just a couple moments here. So let's see, I guess this product, the next column, is going to be, uh, I'm running out of room. So the next one is going to be y over 2 times the areas. I'll put just da here. Right, so I'm going to make a column for my x's. I'm going to make a column for my function values. In this case, y here and the function value, these are the same. I'm going to make a column for the y over 2 times da, and that's what this thing is right here, y over 2 times da. I'll make another column for my areas. Uh, and I'm going to need those for uh, down here. <clears throat> so now here's what it looks like in Excel when I try to work this all out. i got to flip my computer around, so give me a moment. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is put my lower and upper bounds in. So A for lower bound, in this case, is 0. I'm going to use B for my upper bound. In this case, it's pi, or I'm going to put 3.14154 five, nine, oops, eight, nine. I've got, to, I've got to choose a number of rectangles. I'm going to choose 10. And the very first thing I'm going to calculate is my delta x. I usually just kind of type del x here. Actually, we should probably put del, oops, delta, how about d-a-l-t, d-a-l-t, because del x actually means something else in calculus. But, all right, so I'm going to call that del t here for my delta, oops, darn it, I did it again. Delta x, not t, x. There we go. All right. And then here I'm going to type equals. In Excel, that tells it there's a formula coming. And the delta x is going to equal b minus a over n. 0.3149. Now, the nice thing is, by setting it up like this, if I want to, I can go back now and change this to, say, 20 rectangles, and Excel will automatically update my delta x, but go back to 10 for now. All right, next thing I need. Uh, all right, the eyes. This is just basically a name for the rectangles. I'll have Excel generate these. I'm just going to type in three of them. When you sell, Once you show Excel a pattern, it's really good about recognizing that pattern. It'll fill out the rest of them. Real common mistake here, if you click on just the first one and drag, it'll fill it out all ones. So you want to make sure you highlight the pattern and then drag. All right, then we're going to need the x sub i's equals. Now I'm just looking over here, and I'm going to put this formula in. All right, i times delta x minus 0.5 times delta x. Now, in Excel, remember that what it does is when you grab and scroll down, it, it scrolls down with the cells that you reference. These red ones here, we do not want these to scroll down. So we want these to be locked down. And hopefully you've seen some of my videos on how to do this. But if you're not, if not, what you do is you go right behind that. I'm going to hit F4. In a PC computer, in Excel, F4 puts those dollar symbols in. I call that double dollaring. And it tells Excel, do not let that one scroll. We need to also double dollar this, this guy right here. If set up correctly, the very last x should be just short of pi. So pi being 3.14, all right, we're liking that. All right, now we're going to need function values. So I'm going to go ahead and label this f of x sub i is equal to sine of this. Now, if we did this one right, it should start small, go close to 1, get small again. So you can see here, right in that pi over 2 type of region, there's where our sine is the largest. Okay. Um, 
Now, so I've got now a column for my function values. Now I'm going to do a column for this, y over 2 times dA. So equals, um, I guess I'll just label it just like I see it, y over 2, and actually what I'll, how I'll label it is y over 2a sub i. Because what that's going to give me, whoops, it does not like that. All right, how about we label it a sub i over 2? Because the y times dA is giving me the area of the ith rectangle, and then divide by 2. So this is going to equal f times delta x. Anything we reference over there has to be double dollared, so we hit f4. Make sure that thing doesn't move. Divide by 2, hit equals. Boom. Okay, so what we have now, this a sub i over 2, that's giving me this y dA over 2 part. Again, the y times dA, um, that's giving me the area of each rectangle, which I've estimated here by taking the function value at the appropriate location uh, times delta x. Right? And again, you'll see the delta x in the formula there. All right. Uh, we're also going to need this. We're going to need the total area here, so I'm going to make one more column, which is a sub i, and those are just going to equal the function values times delta x, and again, we want to double dollar that. All right, so I think we're, I think we're ready here to do a couple of things. Well, one, I'm going to do this. I'm going to calculate total area first, a total move over here, equals the sum of all of these. Area under that curve is looking like 2. Y bar, let's see. I'll just type Y bar, I guess, is equal to the sum of all of these. divided by the total area. And it did not like that. And I don't see any reason why... Oh, I see why. Okay, let's see here. This needed to be closed off here. Sum, got to close parentheses when you tell it what to div uh, sum over. Then divide by total area. Still doesn't seem to like it. There we go, 0.5. I believe that that's correct. So again, I want to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what is it we're calculating? All right, Y bar. We're calculating the centroid, the Y coordinate of the centroid of that region bound in here. Now, how do we do that? We take the Y coordinate of the centroid of the rectangles. Now that's equal to Y over 2 because I, what I should have actually put here is f over 2, f of x over 2 would be a better way to label that. f of x is the height of the rectangle, divide by 2 puts us at the center. y over 2 is fine, but I think f of x divided by 2 probably would have been a better thing to label. This gives it weight. We're multiplying it by the area of the rectangle. Then we're summing those all up, dividing by the area, which is the sum of all the sine x, dx terms uh, left to right here, or 0 to pi. Now, in Excel, how do we do that? First thing we do is we note our lower bound of 0, upper bound of pi. I went ahead and put those values here and here and gave them names. A and B is fairly standard language for uh, uh, integration. We choose a finite number of rectangles, in this case 10. But you can use 20 or 30 or whatever you want. I find that 10 gives me pretty darn good results. Uh, in most cases. First thing I always calculate is the delta x. You almost always need the delta x whether you're calculating an area, a volume, a centroid, a moment. You're almost always going to need that thing. Um, these are just names. This, these are just names for the different rectangles. Or, uh, in this case there's 10 of them, 1 through 10. This one right here is the first really, really important piece to this puzzle here. Again, getting back to our picture. And now I'm focused on these first two rectangles. Again, using the midpoint rule, you got to be very exact about this. That first rectangle, its length is the function value at half of a delta x. Second one, to get the length of that rectangle, we need the function value at 
1.5 delta x and so forth. So this formula here, again, I times delta x, very important to realize what that would do. That puts you at the right-hand side of any given rectangle. Subtracting half of the delta x centers the rectangle. Right? Then you have Excel do all of them, which is nice. These are just function values, you know. These are just areas divided by two. And, and again, um, whoops, I got to make sure I did that right. What we wanted, area times y divided by 2. Blue times red. Oh, and as I go through my video here, I, I see that I made a little error here. Um, whoops, unless I took that into account here. Let me just make sure. Did I take the areas? Nope, these still needed to be multiplied by the function values. So, actually, there's a mistake here. Darn it. I'm going to make another column here. And that column is going to be y over 2 times a sub i. All right, that column is going to equal y divided by 2. Whoops by 2 times a sub i. And these are what we wanted to sum up in our y-bar calculation. And then divide by the uh, total area. I'm going to double click, make sure that's right. Yep, I think it is. Okay, so it's looking like that centroid is at the point, uh, roughly 0.4. And I would take note here that, you know, the sine curve gets up to 1, so right in the middle would be 0.5, but there's more area below the 0.5 than there is above. So the centroid, the y coordinate of the centroid should be a little less than 0.5. So again, sorry about that little screw up in the middle of this. I think I'll save the video for, as, you know, as is. Um, but... I think it's still good for demonstrating how to set up a calculation for a centroid and how to work it in Excel. So um, hope hope everybody can follow that. Have a great day.